This is the Fulford Percussion Hammer. Uh, it has a very delicate adjustment process for the speed and a very small um, up and down motion which actually facilitates all sorts of connective tissue release in the body. It's got about a three quarter inch rubber pad and when we're using it we'll um, place the back of our hand against the body and then adjust the frequency just till where the root cage or bones begin to vibrate. It's an $800 tool so if some of you want to invest $35 instead and have a percussion hammer or a number of them available in your office to use or for the students to use, um, I recommend this model, Fashel Gun CY801. It's about $35 on Amazon and it has the most gentle vibration compared to the other fascial gun, so it's more suitable for working on the chest and rib cage. So, to um, put some cushioning on these hard rubber balls, we can take a fun noodle and place it uh, on top of the uh, hard rubber ball and then just tape it on to, to give more protection. Or instead you could just use a piece of foam on the rib cage in front of the hand. So in my ordinary course of treatment, I'll often be at the head of the table just feeling the patient's head. It had. It's something mothers often do checking on children with fever. I have one palm on each side of the frontal bones and the first thing I'm checking is for heat, stiffness, hardness, and swelling. Then I slide my right hand out laterally towards the right ear and see how much give there is. The give's not just the skin and the scalp, there's also the periosteum, there's the bone, and there's the connective tissue of the, of the falx cerebri that the frontal lobes are hanging from. I'll roll laterally on the left side and I'll compare. Then I'll push towards the center and see if we have any give. An Andrage feel of a little bit of, of, of uh, elastic bounce. And we'll lift upwards and downwards from my palm of my hands back by the coronal surgery. We'll, we'll just lift up a little bit and see how much heat's coming out between the frontal bones and the parietals. So if I found my patient and there's some ordinary heat tension and hardness, I'll go, hmm, let me see if I can do a little bit of cranial technique and release that. With patients who are coming in with post-viral fatigue syndrome that happens to be post-COVID fatigue syndrome, we can't move anything at all in the frontal bones. That was the first sign that there's something wrong that's more serious. It felt so hard. When we come down and check the liver, usually we're using two palms on the bottom of the rib cage and we're leaning up and in to the rib cage. And if there's some flexibility, you can feel the liver underneath sort of like a brake pad on a bicycle wheel. We push in, there's a little bit more of a give. And that's a healthy liver. You can check both sides. So a hand can go all the way underneath and we can slide this hand in and roll a little bit to check liver mobility up to the diaphragm. To check the lungs, we just come up higher along the lateral chest wall up towards the armpit and we push in. From the upper rib cage, we'll push in but we get more information when we put two palms underneath. And first try to lift your lower palm to lift the bottom of the ribs. If the bottom lungs are tight, this won't lift at all. We lift the top of the lungs. If the top of the lungs are tight, it won't move at all either. And that's our first clue. You can't do this kind of exam with the patient seated up, sitting up because you need the weight 
of the patient's body onto your hands in order to judge how much spring there is or isn't. So once we find stiffness, early on it's all in the lungs, uniform stiffness. Later on as the patient's recovering in the post-infectious uh, period, the liver will get harder and harder relatively in comparison to the lungs. So we actually get more information on the lungs if the patient will turn into a sideline facing towards the left. So this is the most effective examination and treatment position. We have both hands back of the ribs, front of the ribs, and we can squeeze and we lift up, which is the direction the ribs run, and we see how much give there is. And wherever there's stiffness, that's where we know we need to begin our treatment. So we have a little bit of stiffness at the bottom of the right lungs and a little bit in the liver on the right side. It's more apparent in sideline. Treatment's relatively simple. Adjust the frequency of the vibration to what will make the rib cage resonate. And then one hand behind the ribs, the other on the side or the front of the rib cage, we'll work our way up and down. The percussion hammer, because it's going vertically, uh, rectilinearly, straight up and down, we can point it like a flashlight. And we sort of catch the vibrations with our hand on the other side, which reflects it back and makes it a stronger treatment a sort of standing wave gets created and down around the liver. And we can come up above on the top of the rib cage just below the collarbone or bring the hammer around the back. And be more thorough. The thoracic spine is often stiff in many kinds of chronic fatigue. According to Dr. Perrin, P-E-R-R-I-N, an osteopath in England that's worked out a successful two-year program for helping people overcome chronic fatigue. So part of our treatment can include vibration along the thoracic spine. Now turn back on your back. After even just a few minutes treatment, I'll come back to the forehead and the temperature will have cooled down already. I'll try to slide the frontals lateral, medial, posterior, inferior, and we'll have better glide. Even a little bit of compression will show us that there's less hardness than there was before. If hardness persists, we'll take the percussion hammer and put it on the shoulder and put our hands where we feel the bone the most tight. Here's near the left frontal sinus and we'll get vibration indirectly. To the opposite frontal lobe and frontal bone. Another location is the sternum. And if we're in a difficult case where nothing's going to respond, we actually can put a little bit of vibration onto the chin and use that to help release tension, tightness, and, sw and swelling in, in the cranium. After treatment, the patient usually feels like they can breathe better, lift your shell up. So our first technique of Dr. Baral's is to put both palms under the lungs. And then I'm rolling the skin, the, the muscle, and the rib cage towards the spine. Inhale deeply and inhale into my hands in the back of your lungs. And hold two, three, and let it go. Good. Inhale. 
to the back of my lungs, push your rib cage into my hand. I'm sliding the rib cage and the lungs further towards the vertebrae. Let it go. And then one more time. Inhale. All the way to the lung. Good. Now, to roll the lungs in the other direction, you want to imagine that the lungs are actually hugging the heart. So I'll start rolling the rib cage and the lung towards the midline, towards the heart. Inhale into the front of your chest. Lift, lift, lift. Imagine hugging your heart with your lungs. And let it go. And one more time. Inhale into the front. Imagine you're hugging the heart. And let it go too. And inhale. Okay, so close your eyes and take a deep breath and see how your breathing feels to you. What do you notice? It feels very full, like I can breathe fully. <laughs> so when COVID goes further beyond the lungs into the pericardium and the heart and the diaphragm, we usually have tension right across the sternum. Dr. Baral's technique for feeling the sternum is to put two hands on top of each other so we can slide a little bit left, slide a little bit right. If we apply a twist, clockwise or counterclockwise, we can see how much connective tissue tension there is around the, the uh, pericardium and the mediastinum. We'll usually release the, the pericardial ligament to the vertebral column from one hand front and back. We can release the ligament between the pericardium and the sternum. Again, one hand front and back. There's a connection between the pericardium and the aorta under the right collarbone. And we can twist. The direction of the heart contraction is up and spinning. What happens when we lose um, those movements can be part of what's most serious in, in this stage of mild to moderate coronavirus or post-COVID um, fatigue. And then we'll check the diaphragm. So inhale and try to pull your heart down as you use your diaphragm. Good, and hold two, three, let go. Good, and one more time, inhale down. Diaphragm pulls down, pulling the heart with it, and let go three. When the heart itself is involved, the adhesion molecules that follow the sort of exudative process that leads to stiffness around the lungs, the frontal lobe, gets into the four chambers of the heart. And at that point, we divide the chest into four quadrants, and we'll go up into the left, up into the right, down into the left, and down into the right to try to see where the stiffness is. When we find stiffness in any quadrant, we'll hold on, we'll lean in just a little bit, and then we rotate our hands and try to put an even steady pressure with the hands. The body is a piezoelectric phenomenon in part because collagen is piezoelectric. They even put collagen on cotton paper and generated electricity by changing the shape uh, of the collagen structure. So we'll get our hands into position, check left, right, up, down, rotate, rotate. And when we're finally connected, it's like we have giving a magnetic field information to the body. After the percussion hammer is given lots of information off and on, we're going for a steady field effect. And then we'll check again, left, right, up, down, diagonal. Diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. And spring to release. Okay, take another, close your eyes, take another deep breath. Lift your knees up and put your feet flat on the table. And rock your knees side to side. About 10 times. And then grab your right knee with your hands and pull it towards your chest just a little bit at a time and release a little bit and release. This is our way of stimulating 
the adrenal glands by stretching behind the kidneys and back down and take a deep breath and exhale. Do you feel any sensations inside your body? Um, a little bit. It feels relaxed. <laughs> So we've just added engaging the adrenal system and relaxing the adrenal system goes directly to the hippocampus in the brain. It helps take down stress in, in a number of different ways. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lauren.